Hello, Pastor David here with a devotional for Monday, February 1st. Happy February, everybody. Um, my theme on Monday mornings has been following the Sunday messages from the day before. We were on the Beatitudes here, and I want to draw out something that maybe I didn't quite get to in the message on Sunday. So our memory verse is the fourth Beatitude. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Matthew 5, 6. So, but to think a lot about food, as Jesus has said, hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Jesus is using a food reference in teaching the blessed life. And I've been thinking a lot about food in the Bible. So I want to just do a, a flurry through the Bible, pulling out some highlights about how God has used food to teach us about him and our salvation through the Bible. So, we've got a number of points, so hang on to your seat. We're going to take a rush to the Bible looking at food. In creation, God gives all of vegetation for people's consumption, except for the forbidden tree of knowledge of good and evil. So he's there's the tree of life, which is... Food there, fruit for all seasons. This becomes a, an image for heaven. Um, eating fruit that makes you live forever. The idea there connected. But also the provision, but also tempered with restraint and um, looking for rever looking to reverence for God. The forbidden tree. Do not eat this. Eat this, but not this. Humans are to treat food as a blessing of God's provision but also can we show restraint. Abraham meets um, three angels from God over a meal of food. And so food becomes an imagery for a blessed time. A meal time becomes a banquet, a godly time. God shows up at food time. And meal times are considered sacred in Scripture. In Exodus, there's the Passover meal of the Israelites. Um, the Passover meal reminds them of God's deliverance and provision again. Um, and then there's a kosher law that God gives on Mount Sinai. Again, showing that food is a gift from God, but you must show restraint and care in how you eat it. You can't just have at it all you want, whatever you want. You must treat food with, with, with respect. And there's and you must guard against indulgence and selfish eating. Gluttony. In the wilderness, we see this again when God provides manna and quail and water for the people to eat. God's provision each day, yet they're only supposed to collect enough for that one day, trusting in God's provision. So, provision and restraint. And then elsewhere in the Bible, the story, I just think of like Esther, for example, when she um, hosted three banquets for the king. And Naaman and then Haman and Haman. And again, divine meal, which through God's justice shows up in that story. In the Psalms, um, God is like good food. Psalm 41. Just like a deer pants for streams of living water, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul. My whole being thirsts for God, for the living God. And the famous Psalm 23, we have here um, the, the proclamation, O oh God, you set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. By being with God, it's like eating at a meal, blessed time together. And, and it's a time of safety. Even as enemies gather around me, I can sit down and I can eat at peace. So having God is like. And then in Song of Songs, um, King Solomon says, He brought me into his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. It's been an allegory for our relationship with God. Our salvation, again, is like a banquet table. There's also the prophets, and throughout the whole Old Testament, and New, New Testament, the idea of fasting. Where you experience hunger from food, from God's provision, in order to have a, a spiritual hunger for God, to develop that, faith, that, that, that hunger. So fasting becomes an application of provision and restraint with food again, finding God as we treat food 
as a vehicle for spiritual growth. And the prophets, and what got me onto this was the reading from Isaiah in worship yesterday, where Isaiah uses the imagery of a feast to describe what it's like to truly find God. A hint of salvation here, and a hint of end times of us being with God. Isaiah 55, 1 and 3, 1 to 3. All of you who are thirsty, come to the water. Whoever has no money, come buy food and eat. Without money, at no cost, buy wine and milk. Why spend money for what isn't food and your earnings for what doesn't satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Enjoy the richest of feasts. Listen to me and come to me. Listen and you will live. God is likened to food that really satisfies. Also, I think of Elijah and the widow who who provided um, food for the widow and her son all during the famine and the drought God provided. Jesus and food is a, there's a lot of Jesus and food. I'm going to have a chance to touch on a couple of these. His very first public miracle is at a wedding feast banquet. He turns water into wine, right? You see him at banquets all the time. Jesus loved to party with banquets. Think of banquets with Zacchaeus, banquets with Lazarus, banquets at the wedding, banquets with other leaders who invited him to eat. And Jesus himself hosts a couple of amazing, miraculous banquets. He feeds 5,000 on the one hand. <clears throat> he feeds 4,000 on another. Um, king, he teaches the kingdom, of, the kingdom of heaven is like a banquet. One of his parables. To go to the highways and byways and invite in those who have been overlooked and forgotten. That's what God does. Brings them into the feast, the table, the banquet again. And Jesus himself said, we learned yesterday, then in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. and Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And there, the people's response to Jesus in 6, 34 they say to him, Jesus, sir, give us this bread all the time. What a powerful image for us to use food and eating as a reminder of hungering for Jesus, hungering for God's salvation, hungering for God's returning of creation back to paradise where it belongs. Next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating Holy Communion. Again, the Last Supper. Jesus has with the, with the, 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 the disciples is the Passover meal again, harkening back to salvation, God's provision, and God's um, deliverance. And this proclaims Jesus' Jesus's death and resurrection. So Christians gather together and share a ceremonial meal, proclaiming the salvation that Jesus won on the cross. And after, after Easter, um, Jesus gathers to the, with the disciples a week later, on the seashore, they're out fishing. He shows up. They gather. They come in, and Jesus cooks the fish, and they eat together on the shore, and to celebrate his resurrection. Um, the, 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 the disciples in throughout the rest of the New Testament um, celebrate food together all the time. Acts two talks about how they together regularly dined and ate together. I mean, Jesus uses this imagery of, of banqueting and eating as an image for salvation again. In Revelation 3.20, he knocks on the heart's door, he says, and he says, Look, I am standing at the door and knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to be with them, and I will have dinner with them. We will eat together. They will have dinner with me. The image of food, eating, is a powerful image what it's like to be at home with God. Um, heaven is described as a feast. Remember the restoration of food, the um, tree bearing fruit in all seasons, Revelation, eating fully, tree of life. Also Revelation 19.9, the angel said to me, write this, favored are those who have been invited to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. So heaven it's like a banquet. We think of the 23rd Psalm, eating a banquet. Jesus, eating a banquet. Heaven, eating as a banquet. So food is all over the Bible. 
showing us salvation, was like to be with God, blessed and at peace, whole, complete, and the provision of God, but also the restraint against human gluttony and sin of eating and treating food however we selfishly want, treating as God's respect in respect of God's provision. So for our devotional today, we've been I've been thinking about food and how we've not been able to gather over Thanksgiving and Christmas and the holidays this past year like we would like, perhaps. But how can we eat together? How can we redeem mealtime as holy time, as a divine experience? Perhaps we can, um, each of us can create more or smaller experiences, inviting friends over, maybe one family at a time. Sharing smaller meals, intimacy, intimacy, where Jesus says, where two or three are gathered, I'm in the midst of them. Perhaps you can find ways of breaking bread together with neighbors, with family, with friends. Plan that if you can the next couple of weeks to do a meal time, a share of some food. Let's recover this, this, this great blessing of eating together that we've been missing so much. The Bible says it is such a, a blessed time. And also for you and me, I want us to make our meal prayer times when we eat, wherever we are this week, whatever we eat, to make this our daily prayer for our food. The response that the people said to Jesus in John 6, 24. When they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread all the time. So let's make that our prayer time as we eat this week with the five loaves and two, two, two fish. Sir, give us this bread all the time. May every meal that we experience remind us of God's provision and salvation. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being the bread of life, the bread that truly satisfies, the, one, the, 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 the su- supply that reaches our deepest needs. Help us, O oh Jesus, to find ways of breaking bread together with family, with friends, with neighbors, co-workers, to redeem and recover the blessed time of meals. And every time we eat this week, Lord, remind us of your provision and the restraint we need to guard against selfishness. And help us, Lord, to continually pray before you. Sir, give us this bread all the time. Amen. Well, I invite you to enjoy your food today and this week ahead. And as we gather again on Wednesday and Friday for more daily devotionals, bon appetit. Keep calm and carry God.